In a world without Captain America, Carter becomes the first Avenger, joining forces with Black Widow as part of the Avengers. As the team leader, Carter leads her comrades in battling evil. Meanwhile, Carter and Black Widow develop a close sisterly bond. One day, they embark on a mission together to rescue a cargo ship hijacked by pirates. In a warehouse, they discover a piece of armor known as the Hydra Stomper. Carter is overjoyed, believing firmly that her old flame, Steve, must be controlling the Stomper from inside. However, to her dismay, Steve begins firing at Carter. It's clear that Steve either has amnesia or has been brainwashed. He doesn't recognize Carter at all. According to Fury, Steve perished on a mission in 1953, and the armor he controlled has been implicated in several assassination activities in recent years. It's puzzling how Steve could have turned into an assassin. <laughs> Black Widow speculates that Steve has been brainwashed by the Russian spy agency, the Red Room, an organization notorious for training lethal killers and a haunting nightmare from Black Widow's past. As one of Red Room's top agents, Black Widow knows the horror all too well. Before long, Steve makes a move. His target is the current Secretary of State, Bucky, who was a comrade of both Steve and Carter decades ago, but the brainwashed Steve doesn't recognize him. In a crucial moment, Carter comes to the rescue, leading to a fierce battle. Eventually, Steve rushes into a building, Gunai Medat Bucky. At this moment, Black Widow, piloting a warplane, has Steve Lockett in her sights. As a former comrade, Bucky stands up to block Black Widow's line of sight, hoping to awaken Steve with their forgotten camaraderie. Seizing the opportunity, Carter moves in to physically dismantle Steve's armor. Finally, with Black Widow's assistance, they manage to subdue Steve and his armor, transporting them to a secret base in Scotland for protection. Over the decades, the armor has kept Steve young but tethered to it, vital for his survival. However, each activation of the armor chips away a bit more of Steve's life. To truly save him, they might need to confront the Red Room, an entity shrouded in secrecy, so much so that even Black Widow doesn't know its whereabouts. At this moment, Steve suddenly wakes up with a single sentence. He dispels all of Carter's doubts. It's been a while, Peggy. I owe you that date. The three of them head to a military base in Sokovia, which turns out to be the location of the Red Room. As they walk into the town, they find it populated entirely by robots. Steve has already contacted the Red Room, and they are on their way. Black Widow takes the opportunity to leave, giving the old lovers some privacy. The two briefly catch up and are about to kiss when the town's robotic residents converge on them, firing projectiles. Black Widow soon joins the fray, but the opposition is too numerous and their weapons too powerful. Soon, all three are hit and fall to the ground. That's when an aerial ship appears overhead, the legendary Red Room. Eight women make their entrance, led by someone named Melina, and Steve immediately turns and joins them. It turns out Steve has been under Melina's control all along. Black Widow and Carter have fallen into a trap. Melina has had her eye on Carter's abilities and combat prowess for some time, and has orchestrated everything from the hijacking of the cargo ship, to the attack on Bucky, to lure Carter to this secret location. A battle is now inevitable. Both Carter and Steve are formidable and the fight is brutal, but what Carter wants most is to awaken Steve from his brainwashing. Moved by Carter's love, Steve begins to break free from Melina's control. In a bid to save Carter and redeem himself, Steve decides to take down the Red Room even if it means going down with it. Meanwhile, the Red Room's other seven assassins open fire on Black Widow who ducks into alleys to evade them. The assassins follow, leading to a chase. Despite being outnumbered, Black Widow manages to defeat all seven. But then Melina, the big boss, steps in. Exhausted, Black Widow is overcome. To the world, Black Widow is an Avenger, a great hero. But to Melina, her defection from the Red Room to join the Avengers is a grave betrayal, fueling her rage against Black Widow. Just then, Black Widow sees Steve heading toward the airship and seizes the moment to take down Melina. Now that the Red Room threat has been neutralized, Steve is nowhere to be found, his fate unknown. Carter holds on to hope and never ceases her search. One Friday evening, as Carter is about to set out, a red vortex appears beneath her feet and she vanishes, having traveled through time once again. Captain Carter is pulled through a red portal to the year 1602 in an alternate universe. She's greeted by two figures, the 1602 versions of Fury and Wanda. They have brought Carter to this place because their Earth is facing a destruction crisis. For some unknown reason, cracks appear in the sky at irregular intervals, randomly sucking people away. Wanda believes that Carter from another universe can resolve the crisis, so she uses magic to bring her here. In this 1602 universe, Fury is the head of the royal guard and Wanda is a royal sorceress. The queen has two brothers, Thor and Loki. 
One day, another crack appears and sucks away Loki. Carter manages to save Loki, but then the crack targets the Queen. By the time Carter attempts to save the Queen, it's too late. Now with the Queen gone, Thor takes up the royal scepter and becomes king. Carter apologises to Thor, but he doesn't accept her apology and blames her for everything, wishing to imprison her. Left with no choice, Carter flees the scene. During her escape, the Watcher appears and advises her to leave as the 1602 universe is doomed to destruction and Carter might not be able to save it. Despite this, Carter, driven by a desire to do good, insists on trying to save this place. But faced with the cracks, Carter is powerless. Wanda believes that the cause of the cracks is a person from the future who has travelled back to 1602, triggering the anomalies. Carter is the key to finding and dealing with this person from the future. Fury communicates this information to Carter, who then begins her search for the time traveller. Her first stop is at the cottage of an inventor named Tony, who claims he can build a mysterious machine. If powered by the Queen's leftover scepter, it could help locate the time traveller. Carter's next mission is to obtain the scepter. Tony provides a clue and Carter enlists the help of three others living in 1602, Steve, Bucky and Scott. Carter's arrival is a delightful surprise for Steve, as the Carter of this universe has been dead for many years. The four of them go to their hideout to plan their next steps. However, at a critical moment, Thor's subordinate, Hogan, along with the guards, arrives to capture Carter. A battle is imminent. Steve and Carter work together seamlessly in the fight, but Hogan proves to be a formidable opponent. Carter decides to let the others retreat while she holds off the enemy. Eventually, Carter is defeated and imprisoned. The Watcher appears once again, asking Carter if she wants to be taken back home. Carter refuses. The Watcher emphasizes that even if the Time Traveler is found, it might not resolve the cracks in the sky. And even if the cracks are resolved, the universe's destruction might still be inevitable. Despite this, Carter remains determined to save this universe. Carter then breaks out of her cell and goes to the next one. It turns out she had a plan all along. Steve tells her about an ally they can recruit, the Hulk. With Hulk's help, the two make their way to Tony's house, where the mysterious machine is nearly complete, only lacking the energy from the time stone in the scepter. Meanwhile, Steve, Bucky and Scott arrive, bringing along Carter's shield. A celebration is underway by Thor, providing a perfect cover for them to infiltrate and attempt to seize the scepter. As they proceed, another crack appears, but luckily Wanda manages to control it temporarily. However, a chaotic battle is inevitable. Hulk transforms and wreaks havoc in the palace. At a crucial moment, Hogan transforms into a purple monster, overpowering everyone until Hulk engages him, barely managing to stabilize the situation. Carter confronts Thor, demanding the scepter. Thor is reluctant, leading to a standoff with Carter. Just then, Tony arrives with the mysterious machine. Seeing the opportunity, Fury quickly snatches the scepter and hands it to Tony. Tony places the gem from the scepter into the machine, and with Carter's help, they successfully activate it. The room falls silent as a time tunnel opens. The long-sought time traveller finally appears. It turns out to be Steve from the future. During a battle with Thanos invading Earth, Steve accidentally hits the time stone in Thanos' possession, opening a time tunnel that transports him from the future to 1602, thereby causing the cracks. Now, to mend the cracks, Steve must be sent back. Carter is reluctant, but ultimately, Steve himself activates the Time Stone, resolving the crisis and, once again, saving the world. As another portal opens, Carter expects the Watcher, but is surprised to see her old friend Strange instead. Carter hopes Strange will send her home, but he instead invites her to his sanctum. It turns out over the years, Strange has been travelling across various universes, combating and sealing away evil entities contributing to the welfare of the multiverse as a form of further self-redemption. Strange has approached Carter for help because a prisoner has escaped, and he is unable to deal with it alone. Carter agrees to assist, and is transported to another universe. The Watcher appears, cautioning Carter to be careful, before retreating. Suddenly, a white light strikes Carter. It's Hori, a new hero capable of moving at the speed of light and manipulating primal forces. Hori, after a brief confrontation, ceases the fight and informs Carter that she has been deceived by Strange. Before they can react further, they are transported back to Strange. It's revealed that Strange's inner demons have re-emerged. Over time, his desire to resurrect his fiancée has grown, leading him to travel the multiverse collecting super-powered individuals. His plan is to eventually send them en masse into the Forge, thereby resurrecting his fiancée. For the moment, Strange targets only Hori and not Carter as the two have fought side by side in the past. Moreover, Carter, having also lost a loved one, might understand his plight. 
While Carter does understand, she refuses to let Strange proceed unchecked. However, given Strange's formidable powers, Carter needs to find an unexpected way to intervene. She releases hundreds of prisoners, temporarily saving Hori and throwing the Sanctum into complete chaos. Carter and Hori quickly retreat, encountering a zombified Wanda en route. Hori engages Wanda one-on-one -on -one while Carter focuses on defeating the zombies. Hori's powers prove to be evenly matched with Wanda's. Meanwhile, Carter is besieged by hundreds of zombies, which suddenly turn green. Hela has joined the battle. What follows is a chaotic melee involving numerous heroes and villains. Carter and Hori continue their retreat, but are intercepted by the formidable Thanos. Just as a battle is about to commence, Thanos is unexpectedly killed. The person behind this is Eric, who has obtained all the Infinity Stones, allowing him to effortlessly eliminate Thanos. Carter believes Eric's Infinity Stones might be used to combat Strange. Hori promptly teleports Eric away, leaving his armor behind. Carter quickly dons the armor. As they feel a tremor, Hori realizes Strange is activating the forge. The pair hasten to stop him. Carter, wielding her shield and controlling dragons with the Infinity Stones, assaults Strange. Strange retaliates by blasting the dragons with fire columns while Carter uses her shield to counter-attack. Hori runs circles around the perimeter, assisting in the attack. Strange releases numerous duplicates of himself, prompting Carter to prepare for battle using the stones. Seeing no clear path to victory, Strange drags Carter into an illusion, returning her to the beginning of the story where Steve undergoes the super soldier experiment. Steve confesses his love to Carter, but she realizes it's an illusion and breaks free. Now completely impatient, Strange plans to send all the prisoners into the forge. Hori intervenes using his powers. The two engage in an intense magical duel, with neither gaining a clear upper hand. The prisoners are caught in the crossfire. In a decisive move, Hela throws her crown to Carter, and Thor and others follow suit, giving Carter their treasures. And empowered by these treasures, Carter wields a great sword and pins Strange against the wall. Hori takes the opportunity to rescue all the prisoners. But the battle isn't over yet. Carter dons Hela's crown, while Hori adds Thor's hammer and the Ten Rings to their arsenal, and they proceed to beat Strange. Ultimately, Strange transforms into a demonic form, overwhelming Carter and Hori. However, at the final moment, they manage to regain the upper hand with the help of the stones. Strange, retaining a sliver of sanity, finally overcomes his dark thoughts and decides to sacrifice himself, destroying the forge. The great battle concludes. The Watcher finally appears and sends the two heroines home. From a dramaturgical perspective, What If Season 2 is considered an all-around regression compared to its first season. What If should have been a theme that showcases the creativity and imagination of the writers. However, the second season, rather than being innovative, often rehashes old works or misses the thematic mark entirely. The finale in particular is criticised as a complete farce, blatantly throwing inspiration exhaustion right in the audience's face. What If inherently provides a great opportunity for writers to flex their creative muscles, but it also severely tests their abilities. The frequent cursory appearances of significant characters greatly dilute the emotional depth that the stories should possess, also making the pacing feel excessively rushed.